Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, July 23rd, 2023. I'm Jeff. Oh. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 703. And anybody hungry? Actually, I had dinner so i'm i'm good right now yeah, actually i'm really full so i've been <laughs> snacking on some popcorn one kernel at a time because that's the only way i can eat it right now but at least i have one. but you know it's that time of year right state fairs are happening and there are some new foods so I think it's time for another one of the episodes of Just Eat It, Eat It, New State Fair Foods, 2023 edition. <sighs> now I'm thinking we need to have a, uh, uh, try to write for me a really long uh, title for these type of things. Kind of like Good Mythical Morning-esque. Oh. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> Anyways, Gary, take us to the fair. Well, this is part one of a two-part series uh, for this weekend, next week. So it's that time of year. State fairs are coming back around. Uh, so what does 2023 hold for us? So in this go round, we're going to take a look at new states that we haven't discussed before because we did do a state fair food thing last year. Yes. So today we're going to talk about California, West Coast vibes, baby, and the heartland, Ohio. Ooh. Now, the we're only going to review. Best, best stuff. What's that? It's the heartland has best stuff. Yes. <laughs> While we're only See. going to review some of the selections. There's always more offerings that we can shove in our mouth holes. So there will be a couple of links uh, for folks to check things out for the two respective states. California is currently underway July 15th through the 30th. So it'll be uh, wrapping up soon. Ohio starts in just a couple of days on the 26th and wraps on August 6th. Interesting. Yes. So that being said, we're going to go in alpha order meaning okay. alphabetical. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was thinking about our audience, and I was like, I should probably clarify what I mean by that. <laughs> um, fair. 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 And, ah, uh, fair. Discuss... It's, it's, we're talking. Oh, boy. Anyways. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to talk about California first. So um, Benito's Tacos is the vendor. And they have a combo thing called One Benito's Taco and Horchata Drink. So they describe it as a three-hour braised beef taco in a fried tortilla with chili matcha oil paired with guajillo, ancho, and arbol pepper consomme served alongside a cinnamon horchata drink. That seemed a lot harder to say than uh, <laughs> it intended to be. Also, I think I found a misspelling. Okay, yeah. so this is literally yeah. copy pasted from the website. Uh -huh. Yeah. They so the two that. of you editing and changing <laughs> the text on me live is you proofing it. <laughs> and that's fine, but it made me laugh because I knew there were issues. 
<laughs> so maybe it's not consomme. Maybe it's consomme. I don't know what consomme is. Well, consomme is uh, like an au jus. No, I'm talking about cos, C-O-S-U-M-M-E. Oh, but it was before I edited it. Yes. And, and I corrected oh. his edit. Yes. <laughs> Because I didn't copy paste it from the thing, I just put typed it in, and I was about to. The E has an accent, e. so it must be there. I understood. So, and oh my I god, was going to do that. Okay, definitively, our second episode it. is going to be better than this episode already, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> so, anyways, um, so a three-hour braised beef. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Probably means that it's beef that tenderizes over time. So it breaks down. So it's mm-hmm. a lot better, like tasting as far as like the fat being released and it like having, you know, some nice chewability um, to it. So uh, chili matcha oil sounds a little different. Um and then, you know, the, the pepper stuff. So I'm like, oh, all right. And then we get a creamy drink to offset the heat of the, the taco. Yeah. So well, I kind of wish they had, they had pictures for this. Unfortunately, they don't. But I know. It makes and I will me be wonder honest. because the wording's kind of strange here. I think I understand what they're meaning. But my first thought when I read three hour braised beef taco and tortilla fried and chili matcha oil until i reread it again the, my first thought was they made a beef taco and a tortilla and they fried it in chili matcha oil a la oh. jack in the box <laughs> i don't think that's what they mean no the wording just made me think that when i first read it the tortilla was fried in chili matcha oil right but not the entire taco yeah. Or did they have a taco and they also had a tortilla fried in chili matcha oil and they put the taco in the the tortilla that was fried in chili matcha oil? So is there two tortillas? I don't know. See, this is where there's a great many things not understood because there aren't any pictures. <laughs> It is my complaint about this episode. I did go looking online. So I did like try to look up each of these vendors and try to find a picture of these things. Mm -hmm. Um, Only one of the items from California, there was a definitive picture of, and I'll talk about it when we get there. Um, But the rest of the stuff you kind of like, I I think they made it for the fair, but the problem is there's no pictures of them. So some fairs are really good that they actually get pictures from the vendors of all their dishes. Mm -hmm. So you can like take a look at them, which I think is incredibly kind because nosy bitches like me want to see the stuff before I even show up. So I can kind of plan accordingly what I'm going to (laughs) get when I get there. (laughs) Also helps a lot with the podcast. Yes. (laughs) With all that being said, though, we don't have a picture here. And this sounds good to me. It's not something I would eat personally because of all of the peppers and, and um, the heat. Mm-hmm. I am really, really confused about chili matcha oil. I'm not sure how I feel about how that would f- taste. It doesn't, but if it's just like as G- Gary, as Jeff was saying, if it's just the way they fry it so that you kind of get that flavor of the tortilla, I mean, they fry the tortilla in that. Okay, that makes, that may help make it a little interesting um i do appreciate the horchata because heaven knows this is going to need something to kind of cool the mouth down Mm -hmm. so here's a confusing thing if you try to look up chili matcha oil online there is such a thing as matcha mexican chili oil without the tea in the matcha Mm -hmm. so on the website they spell it M-A-T-C-H-A, which makes me think of, like, matcha tea like, uh-huh, that you uh-huh. drink, the green tea, where that's why I was like, oh, chili and matcha, but in an oil. Like, I was really kind of intrigued by that. But right. to know that there is such things as, like, salsa matchas, like, and Mexican chili oil, like, I'm like, okay, maybe they, I'm just not understanding the language. 
of of what they're saying and yeah yeah odd 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 hmm i don't know i don't necessarily i don't necessarily i don't know i know i i know personally i probably would not order this but that's just me personally um jim might like this but i would not so i think for me this would be a shareable i want to taste it Mm. so i would go have z's on it with somebody and be like okay like you know you pay you pay for it and then i'll get you like on the next thing or like right. give you half the money or whatever right. so we could try it out right the other thing that it seems to be one taco and one drink i'm like how big is this taco <laughs> and how expensive is this yeah that's usually the weird thing for me too. Like this sounds like a lot of ingredients for if this is a lot of ingredients for like a taco, like mm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like that's nice. Yeah. And so and especially like, if the taco's like 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 a taco. Like there's a place here in, in Cincinnati, I think I think it was Bakersfield. I can't remember. Whatever it is, there's a place downtown, and they used to do these really nice, like, fun tasting tacos. But mm-hmm. they were like this big, and these were not cheap tacos. And I was like, I'm good. Like, I'm not going to spend a lot. Of, I'm not going to spend that much money for a taco, and it be that small, and not fill me up, like. Mm. I because I, you're going to have to order like three or four or more, depending on you know how hungry you are to right. fill yourself. And if these are like seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a piece, that's a lot, right? I bet you anything, this is like just like the fried taco shell with the braised beef in it. That's it. Yeah, use the the custom AMC popping, but nothing else. Yeah. From our... So I, I'd be like, I like yeah. the three-hour braised, so I'm like a, a, probably about a three, which would be like, so you got one, you got one, two, three, four, five, for like the thumb angle. So I would go... I think three. you mean the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, oh yeah, five. <laughs> like I was thinking, number one. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? I'll I'll have this figured out by next show. There you go. So yeah, I would I would call this a three on a scale of five. I'm like, uh, I'm kind of interested, but I really need a picture. I need and I, if I it's need to small, see what it looks like. Hopefully, it's cheap. Well, and I'm hoping that somebody's walking by with one. And I could be like, ooh, what what's what did you get? <laughs> <laughs> so I could be nosy and then be like, oh, okay. How much is it? Oh, all right. Okay. And cool. then decide from there. Yeah. I would give this a two. Okay. It, it, the I'm not gonna eat it, but I think I like the flavor behind it. I, I think that would be an interesting blend of flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Okay, that's fair. Okay. Uh, next up is the vendor Sharky's Onions and Fries. I'm not going to say this is original, but it's new to me. Nashville Hot Onion Rings. So take Nashville Hot Chicken, like Nashville mm-hmm. Hot Fried Chicken, mm-hmm. but make it onion rings. Crispy, spicy, and served with ranch is how it's described. What is the definition of Nashville? Because I don't quite understand what. So, uh, typically, it's when it comes to chicken, it's deep fried chicken slathered in a spicy hot paste. Um, tends to be ter- served on white bread, and has some pickles on top. But I don't think they're putting onion rings on white bread or giving you pickles to go with it. Yeah. 
Nashville hot chicken. Hot chicken or Nashville hot chicken is a type of fried chicken that is a local specialty, yada, yada. In its typical preparation, it is a portion of breast thigh or wing that has been marinated in a water-based blend of seasoning, seasoning floured, fried, and finally covered in a paste or sauce that has been spiced with cayenne pepper. This method of preparation originates within African-American communities in the Southern United States. The richly pigmented seasoning paste gives the fried chicken its reddish hue. Spice blends, preparation methods, and heat intensity vary from recipe to recipe. Rep recipe to recipe are depending on the chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we've discussed on this show and in in other iterations, um, Damon does not like spice. Um, <laughs> a lot of spicy. Um, and um, Nashville hot is to me it, it 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 doesn't work for me so this would be a another like i would taste it if someone was like else had ordered it to like taste it and kind of reinforce <laughs> my feeling about right <laughs> about it and just be like yeah i don't like that and i'll be good and then like drink a bunch of milk or grab a piece of bread or something and hopefully not have the fire for the rest of the day right i mean it is served with ranch that doesn't work for me it, it that's the thing like me and barb like it's the weird fucking thing and i don't understand it i wish i could tell you why but for for me the ranch, like if you do buffalo wings and you do like ranch or blue cheese, that does not treat the heat for me. It never mm -hmm. has. I know what it's supposed to do. Do you, do you, right. do you put enough? Oh, huh? that's the thing. I literally, so here's my ideal like hot wing. One, I prefer boneless. Yeah, essentially nuggets, but go with me. In any case, I prefer literally coating the entire thing with the blue cheese dressing because I do not use ranch. Ranch is way overrated. Blue cheese is 10 times better. Probably a thousand. I'm a huge fan of blue cheese dressing. And, and that's cool. But to me, that feels like defeating the purpose of getting the buffalo wing with the sauce on it. Oh, you like, still get the you still get the taste of the buffalo sauce and everything, but it, it definitely they mask equalize. It. it doesn't mask it equalize. So okay. I feel the heat. But it don't it doesn't linger. That's fair. That's yeah. I normally eat, get anything I get, I get it with the sauce on the side anymore because I like, I am a light saucer. I will own that personally. I'm like, a I am a person. light saucer. I'm like I Josh from Myth Mythical, Mythical Kitchen. I like it wet. Nope, not touching that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like some I, spicy. I am I am the opposite. Sloppy. I like I don't I don't know. I've always felt maybe my taste buds are different. Like I'm always I can really get heat really quickly. I can taste everything and too much sauce becomes overpowering. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. That's fair. Sigma says in the live chat they often put pickles in the mayo. Or pickles mm. in the ranch. Hmm. So that could be a thing. Yeah. I could kind of see that's that. That's a good work. Although that's kind of starting to veer us into tartar sauce territory. Mm. Tartar it, sauce, I think, has a bit more vinegar or something like that. Yeah. I mean, or I'm just sour. saying, like, mm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because the ranch might be fun though. So, so I'm I'm willing to give it a three or a four. One. I was gonna say David David's giving it a zero or I'll go, a negative I'll go. one. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm probably gonna lowball these because I can't see them. Fair. 
Hint, hint, California State Fair. <laughs> but this is definitely something I would try, probably like a shareable uh, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of onion rings anyways, because most of the time, whenever I get onion rings, uh, the breading hasn't adhered to the onion. You and me. That's 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 me. I, I I love onion rings, but I need it to be like I might as onion. well just be eating eating onion uh, and bread. Uh, <laughs> it, it it's just like as if I'm eating uh funions. Yeah. <laughs> Not even that. I, I get an onion and a and a funion. Yeah. Because the, <clears throat> the the onion does impart some of its flavor to the yeah. Ooh, okay. So I, I would say four because I would still want to buy it. Uh, but okay. I would probably would prefer if they didn't use ranch. Fair. So next up from Soul on a Roll Sack. Sack, I think, means stands for Sacramento. Uh, they have something called a Cajun chicken po' boy. I know the po' boy is spelled with an I, and it's normally spelled with a Y. So yeah, just, just keep that in mind. What is this? I need to figure out what this is. So keep if going. you've ever been to New Orleans, po' boys are oh, I what very a po boy popular. Is. This is right. not spelled correctly. Right. That is the problem I'm that's, having. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what Gary just said. Yeah. Need to know so, why it's spelled wrong. Hey, people spell things how they want to spell them. Don't ask me. Um, obviously, they didn't use Grammarly before they did that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> not a sponsor. So anyways, it's grilled Cajun chicken, bell peppers, onions on a toasted French roll topped with house sauce. House sauce is not described. Uh, comes with French fries. So... I personally really like po' boys. Every time I've been to New Orleans, I've probably had one. Um, if you're from the Northeast, we tend to call these things sub sandwiches, grinders, like like the, it's all the same concept of using um, French or Italian loaf bread, uh, but like smaller scale size, and then you know cutting it open and putting things inside of it, um, essentially. So I'm like, okay, I'm like. Eh. There doesn't seem to be anything revolutionary about this, but at the same time, yeah. I need the house sauce might be, you know, unique enough. It, like, it, is it like Mac sauce? Like, is it, you know, is it as simple as like mustard, ketchup, mayo, right. <laughs> like blended together? Like, I don't know. You know, you could call anything house sauce, technically. Come on, I need something more than what you're giving me. Come on. Sorry, I'm trying to find who this is. Soul on a okay. roll sack? Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. I tried. Yeah, they're not out there. They're, yeah, they're not. There's a... They're, it, they're probably they're, a stand that's specifically for the... They're, they're a food truck. Maybe. <laughs> You could you could feel the fun that I had in researching this episode. Yes, and trying to like pull things together it was very annoying. So, yeah. So I'd okay, okay. So again, if this is who it's supposed to be, if this is the same place, hold on a row, sack, hold on a roll. <laughs> I think it's on a roll. Be sacramento is i think it yeah. is what it is yeah. what the sack is for yeah but on their on this website i found um po boy is spelled correctly so i'm changing it in this article in this thing sorry <laughs> that was that was the whole point of me looking it up <laughs> it sounds it's like that, the state fairs yeah website. it looks like there we go it it just it feels like someone did They like, we're going to grab this stuff 
tell us what it is. Maybe they sent it in and then they someone was typing it up and put it up on their website mm. and made some errors. Because like the consomme thing and this one is really a little grating on me. Anyway, with that being said, does this sound interesting? Yeah. Is it something I would like run to go to the fair to get specifically? No. Um, this would be a like it sounds like they're a, if if this is the same food truck, it feels like they're a food truck. And if I were out and I happened to see them at a food truck festival or something along those lines, I'd probably be more apt to get it there. When I'm going to a fair, I want something fun and unique and and almost whimsical, as it were. Mm-hmm. And this is just okay. Okay. So I will give this a yeah, two out of five. Man, you're being harsh. Well, maybe I, if they I have go, pictures, I would I be go better. three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I am giving it the uh, points down for for lack of pictures. <laughs> but I'm I'm gonna give this a four. Hmm. Yeah, I feel kind of neutral. I kind of feel like a three. Um, Sigma did say in the live chat that perhaps it's a Dom Chef boy. <laughs> Air quotes on boy. That's it's B O I. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord. Okay. Anyways. What? Oh, God. What? Our next this one? Next one, yeah. Yes. So, Country Fair Cinnamon Rolls is the vendor, and they have a prize winning Best of the Fair Caramel Apple Cinnamon Roll Sunday. So it is their famous hot cinnamon roll covered with baked cinnamon apples, vanilla ice cream, whipped cream, drizzled with caramel sauce and walnuts. They think it's uh, a fair favorite that has been combined with an American classic. Wow. Okay. Yes. <sighs> yes. This sounds delicious and sinful and sinful and rich <laughs> like this is this is the thing you have at the end of the day and then you go home and you take you go up to bed like this is the like this is going to put you to sleep <laughs> like <laughs> it sounds delicious mm-hmm. um cuz it it and this this is point blank period this is going to be something i'm sharing with somebody uh, maybe um like the idea behind a cinnamon roll topped with ice cream and and apples and and whipped cream and caramel and walnuts and all it just it it makes my mouth water as I'm talking about it. Um, and normally, and Jim can tell you, I don't like things a la mode. Like I, I'm not the biggest fan of things a la mode. I like prefer like ice cream on the side. This I would probably have a la mode. Like, this sounds good together. Yeah, this this is a we're sitting. This is this is definitely not walking. This is sitting down two or three people like chowing down on this. Yeah. Fair. Oh, the smell, and I, I I have the smell in my like. It's, I'm having like visions of the smell, if that makes sense. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, mm, that smells really good. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I'm looking for, because I know there had been, maybe I won't be able to find it. There was a picture. Is that an I apple had... cinnamon roll? Apple cinnamon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is going on? I can actually smell it. Um, so here's my thoughts on this. Um, unlike Damon, I don't like Al mode. Don't don't put it together, please. Just keep it separated. I'm good with having both items at the same time, just not together. And I would lose the walnuts. 
Okay. Which also me gives me a three. A point knocked off for walnuts and a point knocked off for no pictures. <laughs> Man, we are just hammering on them. Something fierce. So uh, this now, be a... I will blame. So it, it, it essentially has a four because I could probably picture this uh, because I, I like the idea of because cinnamon and apples like cinnamon sugar yeah. sort of thing and apples go so well together. Right. Mm -hmm. And having the baked apples, which I'm assuming is going to end up being like gooey and, and probably get to the level of like apple pie filling or applesauce covering a cinnamon roll is going to, it might do what the ice cream would partially do, which would be the sog the roll down a little bit, but I would be okay if it's just the apple. So, now this is one of those things where I'm sure Ala mode or separating it instead of having an Ala mode is not an issue uh, for them or anything, or it's like that's not how it's intended or anything like that. So, I'm not going to dock them for that, but essentially a four, but I'm not going to down to a three just because it doesn't have a picture. And when I go to Country Fair Cinnamon Rolls website, mm -hmm. which is countryfaircinnamonrolls.com, they have no menu. They have new items on our menu. It says smoothies, coffee, drinks, and shaved dice, but doesn't have a list. You can find out about their history and their 2014 schedule. So they haven't updated this in a while. And if you, uh, as my co-host, check out the chat, there should be a link to the picture oh, of this particular item. But that's because I found it on the vendor's Facebook page. So I had to go hunting for it. Uh, I will say if they separated the ice cream, ditch the, ditch the nuts would be A++, plus plus, but still 4, 4 or 5. Which is still Can't hear you, Damon. I'm, just I'm for muted. the record, before you start, just for the record, all of our audiences, like, the, my best part is telling David that we can't hear him, and then lip reading the goddamn motherfucker, like, <laughs> it comes right after that, when he has to unmute, anyway. It was, it, I was like, fuck, 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 yeah. <laughs> I muted myself because I heard, I was, I heard thunder, and I was going to ask my, my Amazon thing, um, whether it was raining so anywho um alexa is it well, raining yeah i just don't want to say it because i don't need her to answer right now hey siri She's... what's the weather that's, just, that's it just set off everybody's siri at home <laughs> i don't know i just said it's clear in 99 degrees here so that's lovely um so this is not the best picture. That's what I was trying to say. I get the gist of it, but th I, this is not a good picture of this. It, this was not presented for like a food, you know. I don't think they're a company that has a professional food photographer. Yeah. Even so, it just, it doesn't work for me. Anyway, that's just me saying like, I just, it didn't, it's not as appetizing. Because that is a lot of walnuts. Um, um, yeah. Gay Ben anyway. thinking there's not enough nuts. Who knew? Right. Right. Crazy. Wild. No one would have yeah. ever known. <laughs> but it does look good. So I would. I will stick to my vote, which was going to be four out of five. Okay. Yeah. Four out of five. That's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It's still Gary. good. Gary. 
Um, I would probably say a, a four. I mean, like based off of the one picture we could find and the description, <laughs> I'm like, okay, hot cinnamon roll. I'm game. Probably not a Cinnabon, and that's okay. Yeah, because not everything needs to be fucking Cinnabon flavored. Just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, all right, you know, baked cinnamon apples, vanilla mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cream. You know, I mean, it, it all checks out. I. If my one of my best friends was with me who has an allergy, we'd have to ask if they have one without walnuts, mm-hmm. like at all. But uh, yeah, no, it works. Yeah. yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, I don't have an allergy. I just don't like it. It sounds so yeah. weird coming from me. Yeah, my brother um, also has a allergy. He can eat all. Well, he can. He can't. He can eat peanuts, but he can't eat any other nut, or any other nuts. So I think he has a tree nut allergy. Um, and I know peanuts aren't really nuts. So. They're legumes. Anyways. They're legumes. Yeah. Um, okay, what is this last one? Okay, so Lynn's Hawaiian Shave Ice is the vendor. Um, and they have a version called a Chamoyeda. It's a mango shave ice over a Chamoya layer, which is topped with more Chamoya, tagine, and a comes with a tamarind stick so um chamoya is a sauce condiment used a lot in mexican cuisine it's typically made from a pickled fruit um it can come like as a liquid but also in a paste consistency um typically it is described as salty sweet sour and a little spice from chilies so it's kind of hitting all the the different profiles Huh. And this it's actually a, already a drink. No, th- this would definitely be a like a. Uh, uh, ooh, what is that? Let me try it. Share with mm-hmm. friends, sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to give it a five just because it sounds kind of yummy. It's I'm just not familiar with Chamoy to really say specifically. Yeah, whether it be, um, be something that's tasty, but I am intrigued. Yeah, so the yeah and chamoy, um, the the th- kind of thicker version of it is usually used as a flavoring in frozen confections like sorbet. Um, so I, I find it interesting conceptually. I'm like, okay, this really kind of sounds like a a thing that we would be interested in to try yeah um i'm not that familiar with it i would expect to see this a lot more where you live jeff than where damon and i do in the northeast um because i'm getting the impression this is very much like a a mexican cuisine kind of like based um spice seasoning sauce whatever syrup depending on like what its formation is but i mean it's california so yeah they do have so i was like Huh. So the idea of like a mango shave ice, I'm like, okay, I like mangoes. I like the concept mm-hmm. of the shave ice. And I'm picturing myself like at a fair. It's hot. I want something mm-hmm. to pull me down. Um, so this, and then I don't know if either of you have ever had tagine um, as a seasoning can be, you know, you know really uh, kind of punchy, flavorful, a little bit of heat very um citric acidy uh-huh. uh kind of thing so i could see that um yeah so i'm like mm, uh, it's a thing so i'd probably give it a three and a half I, i'm not going a full four because i'm like I, I again i don't have a picture i don't know what it looks like so well i gave you up. a um in the in the chat there's a link because this is an actual the chart Shamoyata is an actual drink, and there's a mm-hmm. Wikipedia page for it, so you can get an idea of what it might look like. Um, this drink is the most commonly prepared with mango sorbet or mango flavored shaved ice. This t- sometimes, thus, it is sometimes called a mango nada or a chamango. Yeah, mango. Yeah. So I I I like the idea of this drink. I like the idea. Um, sweet and spicy. This is, I don't think this would be as bad for me. Um, I will, I think I'll tie with 
Gary and give it a 3.5. This is not something that I would necessarily immediately get drawn towards, but if me and Jim or me or some friends were out and they wanted to get it, I'd be like, oh, let me give it, like, let me give it a try. Mm -hmm. Or we can share one, you know. Because the idea, the like the way it's described and how it sounds, it sounds interesting to me, and I would like to maybe try those flavors together. Yeah, I think okay. that's fair. I'm getting it. Okay. Nice old. All right, we're ready to move on to Ohio. Three and a half. There we go. There we go. Yes. All right. So in the heartland, moving over to Ohio, again, this starts in a couple of days. Um, Big G's Food Service, as the vendor, has something called a crawfish bowl. Not boil. Bowl Mm -hmm. with a W. It says, if you're looking for a seafood dish, this is the treat for you. It takes boiled crawfish to another level, mixing it with corn and vegetables. Again, don't know what it looks like. (laughs) What's all That's... is involved? And I'm like, okay, so bowl, like, is it just come in a little styrofoam bowl? Right. Like, is to, is this like a a boil that they put in a bowl? Like, is that is that all this is? Because know. if that's all it is, then no, I don't I don't care at all for it. Like, no, right. no, thank right. you. But like, if you're, um, say you're taking crawfish and taking the meat out and cutting it up and then putting it with the corn and the vegetables and like. Kind of like a, almost like a, not a stew, but, you know, a dish. I, I might be more apt to give it a try. Um, um, crawfish for me is t- nine times out of ten a no, because I do not like working for my food. Um, so, <laughs> lobster, crawfish, shellfish, like where you have to pull it out of the shell and all that shit. I'm out. I'm good. And I know it's good and I'm sure it's fucking tasty. Yes, I am lazy as fuck with that. (laughs) I go to a restaurant and I want to eat the food and have it ready to eat when I when I sit down with it. I am not a person that wants to like work to get to the food. No, I'm good. Like, um, so I will own that. That is a me thing. That is a personal thing. Um, And this is kind of math for me um and again since we don't have pictures and i don't know exactly how this is being prepared and presented i'm going to assume that it is like they take crawfish and boil them and then throw them into some potatoes and our corn and veggies i and I, I'm good. I, feel, I feel like it's breedable style like a chipotle breedable where they Take the pieces, throw it into a bowl, and there you go. Well, if the pieces of crawfish are de-shelled, I'm good. If not, right. I will pass. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's it's rather difficult to to determine what the heck the thing is, um, kind of without the the picture, so to speak. Uh, so. One of the interesting things is so like Big G's does have a website, um, but all they're selling is like their rubs and spices and sauces. They do mm-hmm. have one that's a Cajun seasoning and dry rub. So I'm guessing this is used in this particular one of um, the ingredients, say salt, sugar, spices, generic, onion, cornstarch, garlic, um, and extract, extractative instead of extract of paprika. Um, so pretty basic. As far as like you know the, the ingredients of what that would be. Um, so I'm like, hmm, okay, that's a thing. I don't know if I would you know get super excited about it, but the the fact right. that it's a bowl, I was intrigued. And now that we're discussing it, I'm like, eh, <laughs> like, like mm, I don't know if I find it all that exciting. It's so a one for me. Damon, give it okay. A one, that's fair. It's a one for me. Can you guess why? Crawfish or seafood? You don't like seafood. 
Exactly. That's what I remember. I remember that. Jeff was not a seafood fan. Fair. fair. Seafood or I... food like food, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Tuna is probably the closest I ever get to it. That's usually the can stop. I would like to try tuna steak, but I haven't had it. Tuna steak would be hard, I think, because tuna steak is better when it's, like, not well done. And? Just just letting you know. like I, I'm well aware. Okay. Okay. You, usually so, it's seared around, but not in the middle. Yeah. This yeah. So what's ironic to me is so I find this article that just came out the other day about this, the Ohio State Fair and the foods, and it lists a whole bunch of them. It lists this one amongst all the new foods, and it says, if you're looking for a seafood dish, this is the treat for you. And I'm like, didn't I just read that a moment ago? Yep. <laughs> exact same description. Great journalism, kids. Like, all it says is taking it to another level with corn and vegetables. We don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah, I need you to give me more context. I need to know what the fuck this is. Like a crawfish bowl. That's great. What the fuck is it? Right. Agreed. So yeah, that's that's not a thing. Yes. Your score. Oh, uh, I'm gonna probably go with a with a two. And I'm really like hesitant on that because I don't care for crawfish. Like I'm not a seafood person, but I'm trying desperately to give them the benefit of the doubt that like it's a good presentable dish. Again, I don't have a visual, so I got nothing to go off of. So I'm like, eh, I wouldn't buy it for me. <laughs> but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna crap on it and say it's a horrible thing or it's bad because you know it might might very loosely be you know. <laughs> Okay, thing. Sigma says it like that's how I feel. There's corn and such in a boil. Like it's not really elevation. So again, that's my other part of it. Like right. is this I just went Jim and I went to a place a while back where we did like their main thing was like doing boils. Right. And like corn and potatoes and some vegetables are usually just like part of the boil. So it's nothing new. It's basically right. they're just trying to take a crawfish boil and make individual bowls so you have the flavors of the crawfish boil without all the hassle the the big tables with the parchment paper sorry yeah anyway moving on moving on so that being said uh next up is the funky flamingo as the vendor, and they have something called the cookie dough explosion. So this is a freshly baked chocolate chip cookie topped with salted caramel gelato, uh -huh. scoops of cookie dough, covered in hot fudge, caramel, whipped cream, and Oreos. It is diabetic shock <laughs> waiting for you. Yeah, this, this is another like decadent, rich, like overindulgence feeling. Um, and it, I'm glad they had cookie dough in it because I didn't read that. I was just reading it and the first thing I saw was like, there is a chocolate chip cookie. I'm like, where's cookie dough? Oh, it's actually in there. Okay, cool. Um, I don't, I don't, mm, I don't know. This sounds like a lot. It has some good flavors. I like the idea of the cookie. I like the idea of the gelato. Salted caramel gelato does sound delicious. But then cookie dough and hot fudge and caramel and whipped creams and then like sprinkle oils on top of it. That's a lot. Uh oh. Do we have a picture? Well, so weirdly of all things, last year at the Florida State Food like Fair, 
mm-hmm. the same vendor presented something very similarly. So the flunky, the flunky god, the <laughs> funky flamingo out of Gulfport gave, created something called the co- the cookie dough explosion, which is pretty much um, what we're seeing here. It's it's very similar. Um, mm. The description not, is nearly identical. There's no caramel on this one, though. Right, and there's also no Oreos, but that's why I was like, oh, uh, Oreos. I, see. I see a piece of Oreo. I see okay. pieces of Oreo, and okay. like again, there's sprinkles, which. Come on. Um, there's no caramel, it looks like. Um, and I don't know if that's um, salted caramel, ice, um, gelato, or if that's just vanilla or something along those lines. So it says it's in the the, pic- the description with this picture that I sent to you was salted caramel gelato. Okay, so it is kind of the same thing. It just doesn't have the caramel. It has sprinkles as opposed to caramel. Right, so they, they slightly modified it from one year to the other, but that's the basic it gist or concept of it. No matter what, it is definitively sugar upon sugar upon sugar upon sugar. It's carbs, 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 and a little dairy. Um, it is, yeah, gonna 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 do things to you. As Sigma said in the live chat, have your insulin on the standby. <laughs> like, be be ready to take your injection, kids. Yeah, yeah. This is. Yeah, this would be indulgence. This would be. This would be. I'm not eating this by myself. Like, absolutely not. This is okay. better one where I'm sharing it with one or two people. Like, this is far too much. I think to eat on my own. And I, I hope again that the cookie dough is is eatable not eatable edible cookie dough well most cookie dough, dough is edible well it, whether you you, whether eat it. whether <laughs> are you kidding if i made cookie dough i'd be eating it but, you, should, you have to be really careful about eating raw eggs that's but, I, yeah that for is commercially my... yeah well they probably they probably use pasteurized eggs or something. but here's the thing Here's a little here's a little tip for people that didn't know. It's actually the flour in edible cookie dough that tends to carry the bacteria, not ah, the eggs. Eggs. Okay. Well, good to know. So it is if you look it up online, you'll see there's recommendations if you're gonna make edible cookie dough that you actually bake your flour in a cookie sheet for a small period of time in a hot oven to basically kill off the potential of any bacteria that's in your flour since you're not technically going to cook or bake mm. the flour in the cookies. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, so no, I agree with you. Like the, the cookie dough scooped, hopefully it's already edible, meaning that it's already been pasteurized or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Legal all that kind edible. of deal. Yeah. So there's that. So votes. Um, I'm going to give this a four because it's a great idea. Would I have it? Probably. I would probably opt out. Uh, just because I'm not going to deal with that shit. Uh, that affair, whether I'm sitting down or not. Mm. Um, I think I prefer some of the, some of the things more apart, like the cookie dough. I just want to have cookie dough or in the ice cream, cookie dough ice cream. Mm-hmm. I, I I'd be I'd be okay with, um, but uh, amongst other cookie stuff and throwing the Oreos, some of it it's a little bit uh, mm, too much. It's yeah, right. But. Yeah. Um, Especially when you're adding Oreos to like, chocolate chip cookies and cookie dough. I mean, I, I mean, the, the idea is exactly what it is. You have uncooked cookie dough and cooked cookie dough. Uh, An but, explosion of cookie. Yeah. So, and broken up cookies. I, thought, I think it's a bit excessive. Um, I still think it's a... Definitely a good idea, especially for somebody who's looking for a full-on sweet, his 
sweet tooth and definitely a shareable thing but uh -huh. not, not something i would opt for but no i think it's good i'm gonna give it a four cool um this is going to get a 3.5 for me um i like the idea it just feels overly rich and and a, it's again i think it's a little too much it's overboard if it is to me this is like the coco chanel like maybe something could have been taken off like maybe take off the oreos or maybe take off the cookie dough or if you wanted to be a cookie dough explosion then maybe take away the chocolate chip cookies you know that there's something something needs to like be taken away from this to make this i think more cohesive um overall i and i also feel like jeff i would probably like some of these things separately i would probably love like a cookie like the chocolate chip cookies with the um salted caramel ice cream as like a sandwich or almost like a like a waffle coney kind of thing that I could see being fun. Like make it like a Sunday almost with the cookies and the salted caramel ice cream and maybe the caramel and chocolate and yeah. It's fair. Gary. Um I agree with you, Damon, on a three point five. I I, I would I would have some, but it's definitively a sharing dessert. Like I need a pack of people. I need like four to six people. So we all have like just a couple bites each. And that's it. Like because there's two big ass cookies plus the cookie dough plus the gelato plus like it, it's just so much. And I'm like, yeah, no. No, I, and plus I would like to not, you know, fall into a diabetic coma before I leave the fair. Like, just saying. after you leave the fair, that's fine. Well, because <laughs> if I'm in a car, hopefully it's someone else's car, and I could just sleep on the ride home, and then I right. don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so next up, the Ohio Poultry Association and their deviled eggs. Okay, wait, nope. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. I read the first two and I'm like yeah. four. Yep. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep going, Gary. So it says, try their all new flavors rotating daily. And here are the flavors, kids. So hold on to your hats. Cotton candy. Lemon meringue. Chocolate. S'mores. Mexican street corn, everything bagel, honey fig blackberry, mm. maple bacon jalapeno, mm. sweet Korean, mm. chunk, oh, sorry, I think it's <laughs> crunchy chili, <laughs> tomato bacon ranch, and Greek. It's a lot of different flavors. Right. You obviously don't get them all, as it said. Wrote new flavors rotating daily. So let's see. That's one. Two, to, to to enhance that, I believe it's actually sweet Korean barbecue. Okay, so. and there's like twelve flavors. Um. So, oh, it. So there's an article online. Uh. The Ohio Poultry Association, known also as the Devilishly Good Food Stand, um, is a new stand coming to the Fair's Taste of Ohio Cafe. It will feature 12 flavors in total, including, and then they list all of them. So the Lemon Meringue Deviled Egg is a 2022 Ohio State Fair flavor. So that's from last year. The Chocolate Deviled Egg is a 2019 flavor. So that means it's been around for four years. The Cotton Candy is a smooth, creamy filling made with powdered sugar, cream cheese, and sweet cotton candy syrup will be topped with a light and airy piece of cotton candy. Okay, so there's food sound will feature 11 other savory, so there's a total of 12 flavors, right? Yes. 
I would get the dozen and just have one of each. And just <laughs> throw them all. I, I will say this. I'm a huge fan of deviled eggs. Same. And, well, the traditional deviled egg mm -hmm. will always be my favorite. Um, I am willing to try every single one. Some of them I might like, some of them I don't. Do I care? No. I would get the the dozen and then try each one. Just, 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 just so to, to try. To go, right. To go off of what Jeff's saying, I would be... <laughs> sorry. I just read Sigma in the live chat. WTF, were they stoned with the first pack? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that's the theme when it comes to food fair. Uh, or fair food. Um Anyways, no, I agree with Jeff's concept of buying the dozen. I laughed at it at first, but then I realized if Drew and I were together, we would get a dozen because we would get one of each and then we would cut them in half uh -huh. and that would be our bite. It's like, so we would try all of them, but I'm telling you right now, the, the first three I listed uh, in this last time, lemon meringue, chocolate, and cotton candy, sweet deviled eggs is not something I'm looking forward to, but I would Try them to There's be proven wrong. And I don't, I know David is out on that. But he would not uh -uh. in a million years. <laughs> David's our picky eater, so. Uh -uh. No. Gary well, and I are more adventurous. One, yeah, the fourth one is s'mores. So it features a marshmallow topping and a graham cracker. So there's four that I'm like, I don't know about that, but I will at least try a bite just to say that I've had it and then move on with my life. Um, I will say the Mexican street corn deviled egg really yeah. appeals to me Yeah, uh, because I like Mexican street corn like flavoring. Um, mm -hmm. There's a dip that Kroger makes. Yes. <laughs> um, that is really good. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. <sighs> okay. the everything bagel that's that's pretty straightforward everything yeah. bagel seasoning yeah um honey fig blackberry so it's a honey fig jelly and a fresh blackberry i'm intrigued. okay okay <sighs> i think their website is ohioeggs.com <laughs> um are there pictures and Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. And most, most of the other ones are pretty straightforward. Maple, bacon, jalapeno, um, sweet Korean barbecue, uh, it, topped with green onions and wontons. The crunchy chili is actually, um, it says it's garnished with cheddar cheese and Fritos, which is not quite what I was expecting. Um, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I'm... I'm intrigued to say that. I least. just, I am not. Uh... <laughs> David is not having it. He's like, no. Nope. Oh man, he's tapping out. Like the I like again. The the minute I saw the flavors and the words "deviled egg," it 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 they do not com it did not compute in my mind. Like it just. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it did not compute. I think I can understand where they're coming from with some of these, and I can respect that. But it just did not appeal to me at all. This would probably be where what you guys are saying. It's like get the dozen, try them all once, and never speak of it again. Like that is that would be <laughs> where I would be with this. And even then, I don't even know if I could stomach it. The idea of of the sweet ones. It is the sweet ones. I will admit that. It is the 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 very sweet like ones that are like throwing me off. Um yeah, like it I get it, it makes sense in theory, like obviously, you know egg is egg it doesn't really have a like savory or sweet flavor profile it's just 
egg. Um, but yeah, the um, the one that is is of the sweet ones. The only one that I am maybe on is the honey fig blackberry because mm-hmm. I've had. Um, I think it's called the Porky Fig from Dewey's Pizza. It's and it has like a fig like jam as the base. And mm-hmm. I was hesitant at first, but it was really, really good. And but the reason it was good was because it combined a sweetness from the fig jam with um some savory, like it had um prosciutto and I think it has um, gorgonzola cheese, if I'm not, if I'm remembering correctly. So it all kind of combined into this really nice, sweet, savory, salty flavor. Um, the honey fig blackberry, I don't, oh, I don't know. Some of the sa- the savory flavors are more interesting to me. So, yeah. Yeah. There's one of them. That, that this yeah. is probably one that you would find oh oh when the one that you would find mm-hmm. interesting enough to, to eat the bacon oh. ranch they look like regular deviled eggs they just have ranch and bacon flavor <laughs> yeah so it's topped with crispy bacon and tomatoes hmm so they have recipes for some of these on here. Not yeah. All of them. So like the, the, I think they did have one for chocolate. Coming around here. I saw their uh, Korean barbecue said uh, Korean barbecue turkey with Asian slaw. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the full description. Hmm. Oh, blackberry fig d- double yeah. eggs. It's on here too. Okay, that I have to see. Oh, that is a picture. I didn't want that. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will say the chocolate deviled eggs is kind of wild. No. That that what is that that no. No, I don't like I don't like that. I don't like that picture. I don't no. Because what's uh-huh. weird to me is you could totally make these out of pure chocolate. You could make a white chocolate egg base mm-hmm. shape like a like a hard boiled egg half, and then make like the chocolate mousse with all the other stuff, and it would be purely chocolate. And people would probably be totally game for it. Yeah. But the fact that it is a real egg with yep. the other stuff, I think, is is the of which here here's the recipe for the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's six hard boiled bags, two table three tablespoons of cream cheese, three tablespoons unsweetened dark cocoa powder. Okay. Oh gosh, you are using the yolk. That I don't of, mm. Well you gotta use the yolk. There's a so lot have... of yolks that's used in confection. Damon's hyperventilating over this. <laughs> So there's cream cheese, cream, vanilla added to the yolks, along with cocoa, sugar, and salt. Well incorporated until smooth. You could use a food processor to simplify and then fill the whites with a mixture. So, I mean, there's a high potential that the flavors overcome the the taste of egg, which is mostly from the yolk. But again, you're still going to have the, the egg white. Now it says cocoa and sugar amounts may need to be adjusted slightly depending on personal taste and the percentage of cocoa that's used. Accordingly, the amount of heavy cream may also need to be adjusted, which it sounds to me like if Damon is even to remotely just taste it, you have to add so much other stuff to overcome the concept of like tasting <laughs> any egg at all. Oh, man. I, yeah. Uh, so and, and then the white is basically a delivery method. Method yes, for and, this and that, chocolate mousse. Yeah, essentially that's what it's coming down to, and that that's fair. It's still a no. 
this is i think this would become one of those moments for me where it would be we're gonna i'm trying this with someone someone maybe a little bit more adventurous than me like jim are you gary like this would be like if we were out um at a fair and you're like let's give this a try and i'd be like okay sure whatever um so i would cut you up a very small (laughs) like a half like like a one teaspoon size portion (laughs) nice then i'd be like here here's here's your thing to try it would i would be fine with half it would be that would be fine and then i could taste it and then like i said probably never try it again see that looks good yeah so So that's the korean barbecue yeah turkey with asian slot egg interesting i i don't think they're necessarily getting the full names for some of these because at least based off of what they have in the website so yeah that's where i'm guessing some of it uh i i think i found the fig one uh somewhere because I had to look at their appetizer page. It's not like they have a page for for deviled eggs. eggs, right? Great, right? No, that makes sense. Yeah. But oh, here's uh, blackberry fig dip. Is that what it was? I'm scared. <laughs> oh, see, that works. Because now it looks like they've got like bacon. <laughs> David like David comes back around because there's bacon. So, yeah, the description is put a, a sweet and savory twist on your tried and true deviled eggs. Uh, combines rich fake jam and with crispy bacon, spicy mustard, and sweet blackberries. Huh. So that I might try. I would give that a try. Like I said, I was always already on the fence about this one. I might give this one a shot. So, like, so okay. now the category... It's listed as the Ohio Poultry Association Deviled Eggs. They have mm-hmm. these flavors. Some of these you'd be like, hey, that sounds good. Let's judge it on the ones that you might actually eat. Now, okay. Gary and I am willing to try everything. You right. would be, yeah. you know, a little, little more picky about what you're picking, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, so you would only have the certain certain ones because it's not like you like. You go into an order and you get everything. But actually, I think they said they're rotating the flavors. So yeah. if they don't have the flavor, you won't get it at that time. But maybe at another time, maybe the Korean barbecue one might be something yeah. you'd go for. So yeah. take that in consideration in your rating. I will take it into I'm consideration. Gonna give it, yes. I'm going to give it a full five thumbs up on this one. Uh, because uh, I know there's going to be ones that I'm not going to like, but I'm going to at least try them. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then there's going to be some that will be interesting, and uh, the, the, the crunchy chili would be interesting. Yes. Try tomato, bacon, and ranch. That combination is just classic for a lot of yeah. things. I would yeah. love those are probably good. So they've got like a, a good... chicken, bacon, ranch pizza. Yeah. Or uh, the uh, tomato bacon uh, uh, specialty chicken that Domino's has, which is delicious, which you could have ranch, or as I like, blue cheese. Blue cheese. (laughs) Okay, with all that being said, we're going to be fair at this. this Huh? We went on a rabbit hole for this one. Yes. Well, we 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 had. I I needed more context. Thank you for going and finding recipes and looking those up because that did provide context. I'm not as like immediately grossed out by this. I will I will admit that. With that, I would give this. I'm gonna do a three, three out of five. I feel like I would eat some. There are some I probably would definitely never eat. But I would give it overall the idea behind it is there. I'm knocking points because I just am not sure overall 
I, I, I believe it or not, I like the idea of the sampler. If like, like again, Gary or Jim and I were like went to the fair and they had all of the flavors available at a sampler pack that you can try them all and and try them. I would might be up for it. Now it essentially adds up to about six deviled eggs, which that's that's a that's a sitting. That's good. Like <laughs> eating six deviled eggs, that's fine. I mean, they offer like two, six, and twelve. So nice. So yeah. yeah. Like I said, like so, like a dozen would probably be a really good share. And I mean, and and if you could get a dozen of them and maybe try like two or three or four flavors, I would probably be up for that because I like the idea of like sharing it and getting that dozen and being like, let's try one of each. Mm-hmm. By the way, do you know what meringue is made of? Yes, I'm aware. It's the lemon. Uh, so with that I, being said. Yeah, Gary, <laughs> um, I would say I'd give it like a three and a half. I, I'm I'm willing to try all the savory ones, like much more than the sweet ones. Mm-hmm. But again, like I said, like if I could get the dozen and then I could split them all in half. Yeah. Um, then then I would be like, OK, I could at least try. I could have a half. I could have a quarter of an egg. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right. So last but not least from uh, Dickerson and McKenna. I just realized that this is listed backwards um, in our doc. I'll fix it. So they have something called surprise, surprise, a flaming <sighs> hot Cheeto burger. It is not David's year. It's it's all about the spice. Yes. Yeah. It's the American palate, baby. They want it spicy. This is a different type of spice. It's, it's weird because like the, the flaming hot and any of the snacks which are are hot don't feel spicy like they are spicy hot but they don't feel that way it's like a texture thing yeah it's weird <sighs> some, something about about the cheese butter or whatever yeah is. so this sounds interesting it's not again it's not going to be my bag baby it's just not it's just Flaming Hot Cheetos, I can pass on those any day. Mm-hmm. Like, is it just the burger is? And that's the part that I, I would want to know. Is it just a bun. dusting? Is it a bun? Is it the... Um... <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, Hardy slash Carl's Jr. at one point in time had a Flaming Hot Cheetos thick burger. <laughs> uh, it it depends on their execution. I'd say I'd say this is good for novelty, not something I would. Once I as soon as I see flaming hot Cheetos, I'd be like, eh, I'll pass. But. Mm-hmm. For it existing, that's fair. I'm gonna give it a, a, a four just because it's a, it's good enough that, that it's kind of, well. Actually, let me bump that down to a three, just because it seems to be redundant. A lot of people have done this sort of thing. Yeah, this is that. This is old hat. You have to to explain yeah. to me why it's what's what's more on this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I need I need more with this one. This is right. one where I would like is it is it like are you like crushing up um flaming hot Cheetos and putting it in the burger um kind of as a binder? Are mm-hmm. you um do you do you somehow have access to the flaming hot like Cheeto dust and are are like dusting it on top as sort are of like a your- topping? Are you making your own? Yeah, that part too. Um, or making Cheetos into Cheeto dust, like literal yeah. Cheeto dust. Right. Take, taking the Cheetos, putting it in a food processor, and just letting it run. Yeah. Yeah. 
So for me, this get this. I'm I'm gonna give the same thing. I'm gonna give it three out of five. Um, I'm probably not gonna eat it anyway, but I can see the appeal behind it. Calling it flaming hot immediately draws on those nostalgia vibes. Um, but for me, I, I know I'm I'm probably not gonna eat it. I'm pro- and I'm probably not gonna like ask for a bite from someone mm-hmm. if they it's got. It's probably like, also it. in partnership with Cheetos. Yeah. Oh. True. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I agree that we need more context because one of the things I'm wondering about is like, well, is it because it says you don't want to miss out on the spicy hot burger. I'm like, OK, so the burger right. is what's hot, hot and spicy. It says it, and then it says taking flame and hot Cheetos to the next level. And I'm like, OK, so if you look this up, this is not a new revelation. Many versions of this have been done on the Web. A lot of them like making a bun and coating the bun in the in the Cheeto like mm-hmm. flavoring or whatever. I'm intrigued to think. So, did you take like a like an all beef burger, cook it, and then immediately throw it like in a bowl of like crushed up like flaming hot Cheetos to basically coat the whole burger, and then put that in a regular bun? Yeah, because the burger will already be wet, so to speak, with its like juices and grease and stuff from like being grilled and cooking. So. I don't know. Like, like, there's a lot of speculation. Plus, there's a part of me that's like, and if you're going to make it spicy and hot, like, are you using, like, pepper jack cheese? Mm-hmm. Like, are, like, are you going that far with it? I just don't know. So, yeah. like, it, it doesn't sound that inventive, but it could be different. Right. But again, the description doesn't explain a lot, and there's no goddamn pictures. So. <laughs> Give us more details. So, so you're rating... Rating. Gary. Rating. Gary. Uh I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say three. Right down the middle. I think I think we're all at three. Yeah. It's it's uninventive. Unclear on if it might be more inventive on the yeah. flaming hot Cheeto burger category. Uh so I you think one context. thing about the Ohio State Fair and the California State Fair enhancements and talking about new foods that are coming. Do what some other state fairs do and include some pictures. Get the sexies <laughs> as uh, sorted food refers to it. Let's yeah. see. Show. Don't tell. Anyway, yeah, I I think the pictures are, are key. Like it really sells things when you could look at at something and be like, "Ooh, okay, now I see it." And I read the description, and it really kind of falls into place. So unless California and Ohio kind of get it together on that front, and I really don't like saying that, um, I don't know if we want to revisit them. Yeah, I like again. It feels weird because I live here in Ohio. Um, I think most of the things that I saw here, I'm not like running to go get. Mm -hmm. Maybe Um, maybe you should go for a couple hours, explore the foods, see if anything catches your eyes. Maybe try some of the more appetizing deviled eggs. (laughs) Do you? And uh, report back. So where is the Ohio State Fair? Can you give me a date yeah, or a location? It's, it's quite, uh... I think it's uh, Columbus. Like, I think it's the middle of the state. Where is it? <laughs> it is the Ohio Expo Center, Center and State Fair in Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. According to their Ticketmaster page. Nice. Pricing That's what I mean. Let's Pricing in hours. Yeah, it's right next door to the Ohio Center, Ohio History Connection, and the Ohio History ah. Center. Right off of 71 at 17th Avenue and 11th Avenue. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go, but we'll we'll see. This is a weird, it's, you know, it's literally this week. 
<laughs> it starts this week, I should say. Yeah. Well, I mean, it goes to through the sixth, so yeah. there's a little bit of time. Yeah. Look. But again, I mean, you could go see the butter cow. I mean, each year, approximately half a million people visit it. I mean, I've known about that for quite a while. I'm just saying, like, that's that's big. I hope big. it's the... indoors in a refrigerated room. Yes, a temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit is maintained inside the cooler. Uh, artists often use more than 2,200 pounds of butter and spend up to 500 hours working on creating the sculpture each year. Butter I cow. Use that butter afterwards? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, Previous well, years uh -huh. have included butter sculptures such as an ice cream cone, a bald eagle, a Hasbro Tonka truck, a salute to the armed forces, a tribute to dairy farmers, a tribute to the state Ohio State Buckeyes, a tribute to Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's, which I knew he was from Ohio, uh, Neil Armstrong, the Liberty Bell. Mr. Monopoly, tons of things. So who knows what this year will hold. So Damon, your assignment, should you choose to accept it? <laughs> At the gate, it's only $12 for uh, anyone between the ages of 18 and 59. $10 for seniors. So, yeah. Check it out. Report back. But in the meantime... This is to be continued. We will see you all next week. Pre-record because we won't be live. Sorry, folks. Uh, but uh, next week we will visit semi-home state. My semi-home state. I say semi because it was right next door and that's where my mom is from. Uh, of Wisconsin. And see if they can do any better. Something tells me because it's Wisconsin and it's adjacent to Minnesota, which home houses the best state fair in the United States. No one's going to make any comment about that comment. Okay. About what? About me declaring that Minnesota has the best state fair in the United States. I wouldn't well, know. I've only been to two. So. <laughs> well, I was just going to say. Like, right now, California and Ohio got some work to do, so I don't think there's any dispute. Or at least on their website. Who knows about yeah. the actual thing? Maybe they're focusing more on that than their website. And like, <laughs> guys, your promotional work needs to, to, to get better. In any yeah. case, we're going to visit Wisconsin next week. So uh, we will see you next week on that. In the meantime, uh, do you have any comments about anything we saw here? Talk about here. Uh, we'll have these listed in the show notes. And uh, you can make some comments uh, at cubsoutloud.com. That's where you can see the show notes. Uh, choose an email, cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361 will Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, which is another place that you can comment about any of the things we talked about on the show. Uh, if you'd like to, you can chat us directly through our Entourage chat, along with uh, other members of the COL Entourage at uh, bit.ly slash telegram dash COL. You can find out when we're playing and recording these shows by checking out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash COL. You can get various accoutrements, such as a made-to-be, our next generation 10-year anniversary shirt, Scent is my four play shirt and various other styles over on Zazzle at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at T Public at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. We appreciate all of those who support because that makes our costs for web hosting and such much better. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe, rate, and review us over on many podcasting platforms, such as Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other, if I happen to actually be doing anything on those platforms. Hmm. David. 
If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Tub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most beer related sites are on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.